Hey guys, this is a big turnout. Um, awesome. You guys don't want to blaze yourselves on fire in parallel? No? That's what's going on. Okay. Hey, so I'm Paul. Um, thanks, Anna. Um, I'm going to talk about a bunch of things, and I'm going to start my timers. Uh, let's do that. Let's do this. So yeah, so I have a problem. It's an addiction. It's called VI. You may you may read some of these tweets right here. Vimsari, um, Min, who's in the audience, came up with that little uh, hashtag for me. Um, so. First of all, as a public service announcement, I feel it would be irresponsible of me because so many people uh, end up in VI. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That was, we're good. Nobody saw that. Okay, so it's a, it's a fact that 80% of VI users simply don't know how to quit. Um, now, there's, there's, there's sort of two ways of parsing that, and I think they're both true. I'm sort of in the camp that I don't know how to quit. Like, I just have to make the whole world and turn it into VI in some manner. Other people end up sort of, you're, you installed git bash, and you're doing your first git commit, and you didn't do that like minus M. And now you're, what? Git bash comes with VI, and you've been using Notepad for years, and that's been working fine for you. What's going on? So there's the public service announcement. That's how you actually quit VI, and I gave you the two versions of it with saving and not saving. So we can move on from that. That ate up about two minutes. Awesome. Okay, the, the point of my talk isn't so much about VI. I sort of pitched it as not a VI talk. The specific examples will be VI based because that's, you know, that's my problem. That's on me. It's not your problem. That's on me. But um, I just wanted to encourage the sort of conversation that's been happening in the hallways uh, at SciPy and uh, PyData as well of sort of tailoring our tools so that we use them better, so we leverage them better, and sort of I want to give you what that may, might look like, what that looks like for me, and so that's, that's the point of this. And I sort of give pointers here for other people, so this happens to be Sam Aaron who gave this talk, uh, sort of refers to this as the build your own lightsaber, because Jedi Masters, it turns out you actually like, each one builds his own lightsaber, that's not, you just like, you go find some crystal, and then you build this thing that's just for you. It's, it's, you know, the grip fits you just right. You know, Yoda's isn't going to work for Luke Skywalker and whatnot. So there you go. The story of Vimi Python started here three years ago, um, and we're we're at the sprints. This is before the notebook, right? No notebook. We just released Qt console, so that's, this is the the first separation of the execution from sort of the client that feeds the execution. So there's, you might, you might recognize some faces, that's Anthony, that's David Ward Farley, there's Aaron Murr. Um, back there we're all walking, kind of, kind of badass if I do say so myself. Um, and this is the place, so we're, it's Thursday, tomorrow the sprints start, really t the, you know, this evening the sprints will start. And this is a great place to hang around and get things done and then talk to people. It's very, very productive. So I encourage every, every, all of you who, have, who think that that's kind of weird to stick around. And it is kind of weird, but it's kind of awesome too. So this is, this, this is you, you may have recognized the spot, it's just right out there. And this is what it looked like four years ago. Um, with Min's help, um, I was able to sit down and sort of understand what the protocol became, the execution protocol, the IPython um, protocol. And um, I had already known, because of my addiction and my problem, I already knew that VI or Vim specifically had Python support. So actually in, in v Vim, I can do pi print hello. And that works. And in Vim, I can pi import this, and that works. So Vim is actually linked. If you installed it right, it's actually links again Python. And you can access the buffers and access lines in Vim using this Python API. So I sort of have that piece. And I have the piece of now I can take those lines and I can send them off to IPython. And, and then, oh wait, so if I had some way of getting those lines back in Vim, then I can sort of tie the loop, right? And so that's, that's what Vimi Python is. So let me demo that. So by default right now, and this is gonna change with Jupyter, 
Now, by default, it's only activated if you edit a Python file. So I have this demo.py file sitting here. Okay, and I have some kernel that I'm already running. So I have, I have this notebook that's actually running, right? This is an IPython notebook, so it's already running. So let's do, let's connect to it. So IPython is the, the Vim command that I send. Now if I hit Control S, that's a line that just got sent to here. So to verify that, NP works here, right? And to, to show you that nothing is up my sleeve, let's say that uh, weirdos, if I try to execute this line, weirdos isn't defined, but in here, if I say weirdos equal all of us, and I hit control S, you'll see that actually the output of my weirdos in the notebook got printed here in a Vim buffer, right? I, sh I should say whenever, whenever the screen changes color, I'm just pulling up a terminal. So I sort of, I flip between the notebook and the terminal. Uh, that might be a little disorienting, but it's a, uh, Sorry. All right, so weirdos are all of us, and now if I re-execute this, that's, that works. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, that's not all. If you act now, I'm gonna throw in some completion. So you'll see that weirdos completes. That's not very impressive. You can get that in the buffer. But if I complete on this, you'll see that this is actually, I'm getting the Python methods on here, right? So how is, uh, how does join work, you might say, okay. So then you open this up, or sorry, you do it, you do it the old IPython way, you do a question mark. So if I control S there, then I get the buffer. So I, in Vim, I now have a buffer that is the documentation for string.join. So I can quit out of that. Um, that's useful when, if I look up something like the documentation for NP histogram, and because our docs are awesome, I can just take this line, so I just selected all that line. Oh, let me do this as well, I forgot. So you can f follow the, the, the keystrokes that I'm doing. So I grab this, quit out of there, paste it in here, clean it up because I don't need to send things. Send it for execution, blah, blah, blah. And where did everything go? There it is. So I'm, I'm basically, I'm executing things, so hist is now a variable, and I can verify that hist is now a variable in here, so there you go. So that's, that's my Python. Um, so that's the demo, that's the, that's the what, right? So what about the how? I sort of alluded to this, and maybe you already know about this, but this is useful information for you to know when you run IPython, is that um, we, we actually have a protocol for doing this thing. So Vim IPython is over here on the left. It's a client. It's analogous to basically a web browser. Your web browser can be implemented in any language, and it just has to speak the HTTP protocol, right? And we have our own protocol. And it speaks that protocol to, um, in the browser case, uh, it speaks with a web server. In our case, it speaks with a kernel, right? So I'm directly talking to the same kernel. So there's a kernel that's active, that's sort of holding the state, and normally you interact with it probably from the notebook and you send commands to it and it sends your results back, but there's nothing stopping another client from connecting to that same kernel and hitting it, giving it instructions and getting, getting things out of it. Okay, so, um, and so, and for example, if you've ever used the Qt console magic, that's exactly how it works. It, it basically does the same thing. If you type in Qt console, console as a magic and you execute it, it'll connect up to this kernel as well. Sort of that's what that magic does. Okay. If you, um, so as a corollary to this, and this is a question that just, just came up and often comes up with, so how many are Vim users? Awesome. <laughs> Woo! Um, I have something for Emacs users too, it's okay. Um, um, it's not the finger. I'm sorry, that was, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't, no, that was mean, that was really mean spirit. I'm sorry, that just came out, that's lack of sleep. Um, no, uh, but, um, so the corollary to this is that how many uh, of those Vim users are on a Mac? So your Mac Vim is linked against some Python, but it's probably not the one you're using because the system Python is hard to install things to. You don't have to run your, your, your Mac Vim doesn't need to be linked 
against the Python that you use. It just, so long as it can speak the protocol. So whatever your Mac Vim is linked against, whatever Python it's linked against, you just need to, into that Python, install PyZMQ and IPython, and then you'll be able to speak with whatever, whatever you know, Python, IPython kernel you want to run, if it's Anaconda or Canopy or whatever, and, and they, can, they can talk to each other, right? And they can, because they can actually be in a remote and in a different place. So um, there you go. If you're interested in more, Thomas and I gave a talk at PyData Silicon Valley. There's a video available. I tweeted these uh, slides out. It's just my last name. It's uh, my Twitter handle. Um, so you can, you can watch the slides or watch the video where I also do some of this demo, and we, we explain this protocol a little bit more in depth. Okay, BiPython is something that's not Vim enabled yet, but it's, it feeds my command line interface addiction. And so it's the same thing, it's BPython, if you've ever used it, which is a, a curses or Erwid interface. So let me just demo that. So I'm in the terminal and I type in BiPython, and again, it connects up to the same kernel by default. And so now here, as I type in WE, I'm not hitting tab or anything like that. The weirdos already pops up, right? And as I hit dot in there, the methods are available, and as I tab through them, they're down below. So this is very useful so, sort of for exploring code bases and things like that. And it's the same sort of thing where, as I go back into here, this got updated, right? Vimi Python is updated, and if I say like that I'm running out of time, and I go back into here, there's no event loop in BiPython, but as soon as I press a key, then it picks up whatever output or whatever else was going on there, and it prints it there for your convenience. Okay, so eight minutes, that's pretty good. Um, so, um, yeah, and that's at bypython.org, and I've only done one release of it, but I'm looking to push forward on this, and so if, if this stuff sounds interesting to you, either uh, beat me over the head, or um, buy me beer, or, um, no, don't buy me beer, just help me hack on it, or just make a pull request, or just get, like, just file issues, um, that'd be useful as well. Okay, um, and then there's the the, you know, we find ourselves more and more in the notebook for, for presentations, for me mostly, and, um, and so, you know, we use CodeMirror for code editing, which is a great text editor, and it has a Vim mode, it has an Emacs mode as well. And, um, but that's sort of, so there's a way of enabling that, and that's so I sort of outlined the code for doing that that you can put in your custom JS. Um, I have a blog post about how to find your custom JS and put things into it. Um, but, uh, all of the commands since 2.0, since IPython 2.0 came out, you have like J and K keys already work, so that's, that's sort of great. But some things kind of are awkward, like if you, you do tap D twice to delete a cell, okay, but P doesn't work after that. You didn't actually cut it into a place. It, you, you know, you deleted it and now you have to undo, and that's, that's no good. And the way that you undo, you don't even want to know how you do it. So IPython Vimception makes the notebook experience more Vim-like, basically, and the reason I call it Vimception is because you end up having the Vim interface within a Vim interface. So we have the dual modes of the IPython notebook, which, which, which is sort of you're in command mode, right, where the shortcuts work and you can navigate cells, but once you enter into IPython's edit mode, I, oh, I shouldn't leave the mic. Once you enter into IPython's edit mode, you actually also get Vim inside of there. So what does that look like? Um, you can see here, I'm inside of edit mode for the notebook, but I'm inside of command mode. This is hard to think about without. And so, so, so this works, and so I can select a bunch of lines, delete them. Uh, Sorry, wrong key. Select a bunch of lines, delete them, undo that. If I hit escape again, then I'm back out in the mode, and now J and K work to to sort of navigate cells and things like that. Okay, so um, some useful things about that 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 you know you don't get default keyboard shortcuts for in the notebook are how am I doing? Six minutes. Like if I tap G twice, I go to the top, right? Or if I go to tap. Uh, capital G, I'll go to the, to the bottom of the presentation, okay? So um, if I hit, you, you, you probably don't have this habit as a Vim user, but if you hit colon W when you're in a text area, or if you find colon W inside your text areas, I actually say, oh, this is obscuring that. That's actually making save work, right? So that's actually like hitting the save button for the notebook, okay? Tony's looking at me like I'm a mad person. <laughs> um, 
So, so here's, here's the code to do that. And um, I, I actually did reasonably well on time. So we'll be able to take questions. What's, uh, what's coming in the future? What, what do I want to sort of work on at the sprints and, and, and down the line, what you can expect? I have a branch for VimIPython where I can uh, edit notebooks and I can open them as Vim buffers uh, in this sort of carouseling way. Uh, it's kind of cute. Um, I can show that if somebody wants to see it. Um, uh, Python 3 support, I've already sort of, I split out. Vim, um, uh, VimIPython used to be one file that was sort of, sort of like a, a Vim script file, but really it was just a, a bunch of inline Python. I split out the Python part of it so I can have Python, proper Python 3 support, and so that it's sort of easier to grok what's going on there, because you can actually look at the source code. So one of the ways that I pitched the stock also is that IPython, uh, Vim IPython is small enough where you can actually understand the, pro you can see an implementation of a client protocol, uh, a client side of the protocol without like needing to know any Vim or anything like that. There's minimal Vim script in there and it's, it's basically just Python. And so you can see what it's like to get a message, what the different message types are, how you drill down into the, the relevant pieces that you have. Um, another thing that I want to, uh, that somebody else opened a PR for, um, um, I, I haven't had a chance to review it yet, which is just better help uh, for um, inline help, so you can actually help that command and, and learn about it. Um, by Python, I want to add uh, the ability to have, to be able to select multiple kernels. Right now, you either uh, connect to the most recent open Open kernel, or you can specify explicitly which kernel you want. But we have this nice curses, you know, uh, uh, or Erwid rather interface, so you can actually sort of have a list of like you have 20 active kernels. Sort of go through which one you want, press enter, and be connected to that one. Things like that. So you get a little bit of uh, like multiplexing for your client. Um, in IPython Vimception, I, I want to have multi-cell selection and manipulation. So I already have the beginnings of visual mode. Uh, sort of, you can see what that looks like here. I can go, right now I don't, I don't have the keyboard shortcuts hooked up to this, but uh, this is a view toolbar. I can actually, if I move this out of the way, I can actually cut a bunch of things and then um, sort of paste them in place. Oh, I just did copy. Oh, I just lost those, all those changes. Oh, joy. Version control to the rescue. <laughs> I always forget how to do this. Skit, check out. Yay. So, um, Anna's gonna walk around and uh, am I, I think, yeah, I'll, I'll just start taking questions early so I have a little bit more time. Oh yeah, for the Emacs users. Um, uh, oh yeah, multi-level undo, oh look at that, that was my next point, I wanted multi-level undo, there you go. Um, so th there you go, there's lightsabers. Uh, uh, Emacs users, uh, there's some talks for you to see. John Kitchen's giving a, a um, gave a talk on org mode last year for doing the same sort of integration, or not same sort of, but same flavor of integration. Um, he's giving a, a follow-up talk uh, in this room um, at 2.15 today, sort of, of actually, he, he's, he's also a madman. He wants to actually force his graduate students to use Emacs, like all of them, and with, without giving them a choice because that's the way they're gonna turn in their assignments. It's awesome, right? Wouldn't you love that? There, I, I hear there's like vigor or vile or evil mode or something like that, so they'll, they'll be able to manage, but that's kind of awesome. Um, and so there's how you do this stuff for the Emacs mode. So yeah, any question? Aaron, thank you. Thank you so much. So I promise I'm not here to troll you. Um, as far as I'm concerned, uh, most of the Emacs versus Vim is just a, an isomorphism of different keyboard shortcuts. So um, I personally, so OS X has pretty um, standard like Emacs things built in to the text editor and then you can also use something called keyboard remap for MacBook to add some other basic keyboard shortcuts uh, mappings. But I'm wondering, um, the thing that's missing from that are certain like semantic things that, that really rely on the nature of the text. So for example, there's no way um, in a standard OS X text box for me to do the shortcut that selects a paragraph. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if Code Mirror or whatever you've got um, supports that kind of thing. So Code, code Mirror supports um, that 
sort of thing in, in Vim. So basically, so here's, um, oh, law of demos. Oh, I reloaded. Oh, that's right. So I should say, by default, I don't even, uh, IPython Vimception isn't something I load by default, just in case other people, so there's a little thing. So watch this, I'm very proud of this. So you guys all go ooh when it loads up. It's not a picture of my daughter though. Do you see that? Oh yeah, that's cut off at the top there. There's a little no. thing up there, a little logo. And it's in flame, here, let me move it so you can see it, there you go. Okay, um, so yeah, so here now I'm, I should be in Vim mode. Now everything is frozen. What's going on? All right, demo. No. Scoot this out of the way. All right. But yeah, that basically it's not, it doesn't want to work. Okay, so here. I've, uh, this is a paragraph. Here's another one, and so I can, if I do, um, no, it doesn't want to work. Um, yeah, there's a way of doing it. That's, that wasn't really a question, but uh, or that was a question, but uh, I don't have a good, I don't know if it does it uh, the Emacs way as well. There's an Emacs mode, I don't know if it does it. Um, or just like, for example, in Emacs, I changed the way that the word selection works so that it selects different parts of camel case. That's another thing that you can't do because it, uh, it's semantic. Yeah. So I'm wondering how what the support is for that kind of thing. In in Code Mirror? Yeah, in Code Mirror, or if it's possible to extend it using. <laughs> it's definitely code. possible to extend it. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty like the. I was actually surprised how comprehensive the the Vim support. I, so I don't know. Again, don't know about Emacs support, but the Vim support is pretty comprehensive. Like you, we have things like registers. You have things like multi-level undo. It's pretty. It's pretty good. Like even sort of paragraph selection. Is paragraph is like a first class object in, in Code Mirror as well. So yeah, that was a lot of fumbling. Sorry about that. Tony. So how is there some sort of Vimception RC file that I can use to excessively tweak my configuration? Yeah. So <laughs> tur turtle all the way down. Um, so right now. Um, the way that you, even to install it, you need to put something in your custom JS to load it. Um, the, it's basically, when, 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 I, when we get that far, it'll be something that lives in your custom JS. Because it's something, it's not something that you can't really reliably read from disk when you're, like, I'm not, I'm not gonna go into the business of parsing your VimRC file, right, from, from Vimception, and um, there aren't, I suspect there aren't going to be that many things that you're going to want to change. And so it'll be just something that you either inline, like as you load Vimception, it's something that you could just sort of modify. Because that's, sort of, that's sort of the way that I already set up Code Mirror. Is that it's like, oh, Code Mirror is on the page. Here are the things that I need to change for all Code Mirror instances so that future Code Mirror instances get the same thing. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Paul. Thank you, guys.